Hi everyone, it's Kira and welcome back to the F Series channel. So today we are doing another tier list and this is all on Formula One driver academies. Now we know that driver academies are quite a crucial moment and a thing into getting yourself up into Formula One. We see so many scenarios now where you get up to Formula One because of your driver academy. So we thought we would do a tier list today all on the driver academies, how they work, whether we think they're doing a good job, whether they think they've got some good drivers and just generally how they're running. If you do enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and do not forget get to subscribe to our channel down below i think we should just get into this tier list okay, okay. Let's go. So this is our tier list. We have got the top tier as F1 World Drivers Champion material. So, you know, they're going to be right at the top. We have got, we'll definitely get them to F1. So we think it's a solid team. You know, they are known for and they will get them drivers up to Formula One. We've got meh, just the middle one. You know, it's just a bit meh. We have got worthless and useless, which, you know, the team is just worthless. It's useless. It's not doing anything for the drivers and they might as well not be there. And we've got actually so bad in capitals, which basically means it is just useless okay so we're all familiar with the tiers now should we get started yeah, yeah let's, go. let's go okay so first we have got alpine we have got christian lungard who is 19 he's in f2 and he is danish we have got oscar piastri who is also in f2 he is australian and he is 20. we've got guan yu joe he is 21 he is also in f2 and he is chinese then moving down to fia f3 we've got kyle colette who is 19 and brazilian and we've got victor martins who is french and is 19. so there's five drivers there in the alpine academy obviously rebranded for this year how do we think it's going to go they've got quality drivers but awful management end of <laughs> yeah pretty much they are their talent is there but they're not going to get anyone into f1 because they keep putting their younger drivers are currently like 42 years old so <laughs> kind of worthless for the drivers yeah, I feel like they've dropped a lot of drivers recently. So actually they've got a quite a solid five lineup. I know a lot of teams have like 600 million juniors. They've just got five solid ones who are in FIA F3 and F2. So they've got good, they've got a good lineup, but are they going to get them to Formula 1 when there's other people lingering? I don't know. No, <laughs> no. I think the thing with Alpine is that they are useless at promoting young talent and where they're yeah. going to go. Because Alpine is one of the only teams that just doesn't really have um, a B team as well. So like Ferrari. Mm -hmm great you've got like two b teams that you could send your drivers to go you know chill at before they're ready for the big team but with alpine you you have to go straight there and with all the rumors of pierre gasly going to alpine next year that would honestly be such a joke for the junior drivers if pierre and fernando alonso were was the 2022 lineup because yeah. you have three juniors in formula two where are they going to go if you bring pierre gasly into this alpine family like i don't see it happening because you've got so many good juniors that you're just gonna have to promote eventually or you're gonna lose them dtm mm -hmm. is gonna be great in it <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it literally is and especially as if if uh Coquelet and uh, victor martins do well in fif3 they could move up to f2 then you're gonna have a ferrari situation from a couple of years ago we do not want that so it's difficult with this one because they've got great drivers but they don't have a great system going on so where do you think we should put them meh <sighs> I would say meh. I would say no. useless as well. Uh, see, I would say meh just because the drivers bump it up one yeah. more. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That's the only but the team is worthless. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's put them in meh then. I can get on board with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so basically, if you actually promote them to F1, you could be right at the top, Alpine, but you're not. <laughs> okay, so moving on to Ferrari. Now, this is the FDA. We all are very, very well accurate to the FDA. FDA, we love it. And in the FDA, we have got Marcus Armstrong, who is in F2. He is from New Zealand and he is 20. We've got Mick Schumacher, who is 22. He's in Formula One and he is German. We've got Robert Schwartzman, 21, also in F2 and is a Russian. We have got, oh, I don't know how, I'm gonna say all these names wrong. Beth, you know how to say this one. Maya Wang, Wang, how do you say Maya, it? Maya Wug. Maya Wug. <laughs> she is 16 years old and is in Italian F4 and she races under the uh, the, she races under the Dutch and the Spanish flag, but I think she is, you know, class, classified as Dutch, basically. She prefers that one. We have got 14-year-old James Wharton, who is in karting, and he is Australian. We have got Dino Boganovic, who is 17. He is in Freca this year. He is Swedish and Bosnian, but he races under the Swedish flag. Arch de Clare is in FIA F3. He is 20 from Monaco. And last but not least, we have got Mr. Callum Eilat, who is 22, and he is in the GT World Challenge Endurance Cup, who is British. So yeah. quite a big team there. So that's eight They've people. Got, yeah, they yeah. have got you know people from karting all the way up to f1 so it's very diverse and they have dropped a few people actually from last year <laughs> we won't talk about it just have justice for john luca justice, for, justice for enzo fittipaldi as well yes I but not it. giuliano Malesi. we don't yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i think honestly ferrari they've got 
of something which not all of the other academies have and that is a good spread across all of the categories. Yeah. Last year it was a bit mm, with F2 but they've got a really good spread and they actually have a history of actually promoting their talent up to Formula 1 and honestly I think the majority of their talent in the academy is pretty solid to be honest. Mm. Yeah, the only issue with Ferrari is they've got so many yeah. that they actually can't all make it up into Formula One. So it's all well and good having a lot of talent, but you're funding their junior careers for them to go basically nowhere. To GT Cup. Not be able to get into Formula One. <laughs> Sorry, Callum. Sorry, Callum Islet. <laughs> nowhere. But the thing is, you can argue they have brought up a lot of juniors into Formula One and then oh, into yeah. that main Ferrari seat. You know, the most recent being Charles Leclerc and Mick Schumacher to follow. So yeah. it's working, but it's also not working. So, well, I they don't have a think... world championship since uh, 2007. So, is it working? Oh, <laughs> well, they are getting a top seat, so it's working more than Alpine. Oh, yeah. yeah, I definitely think it'll get you into F1, but you've got odds of being one of the ten. They're going to get one of the ten into F1 because they've got mm. enough eggs in all their baskets. Um, like, I do think they are one of. We, we know they're one of the better, better junior teams. Yeah, I've, I was going to say that, like, the fact they've got different, like, avenues for their drivers as well, just in case it doesn't work. Like, like obviously, Callum's had to go somewhere else, but there is always a chance that he could come back if, like, they needed him, and I think that's really important. Um, mm. So they're definitely better than Alpine, I would say. Should we put them in... Will Defo get them to F1 then? Or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's should have Callum. We said yeah. four cars, sorry. Oh. X in the chat. Because <laughs> honestly, they do get you there. And I think if they would take on less people, they could definitely have been bumped up to the top one. But I think, you know, there are yeah. positives and negatives. And, and Defo, if you think that like, when like Kimi retires, that's automatically one seat for one of their juniors mm. to take as well. So yeah. that's like... Is Antonio Giovinazzi not a Ferrari junior anymore? He was I never actually a Ferrari junior. He was just backed <gasps> by Ferrari. He was never a Ferrari junior. So that's He's Italiano. Yeah, he was never actually one of those. So that's a fun fact <laughs> for you all. I know. I found that when I was researching. Um, next, we have got McLaren. Now, McLaren's junior program actually died out a couple of years ago when Lando <laughs> Norris promoted up and they dropped Nick de Vries. So we didn't have anybody for a couple of years. However, we have now finally got one guy who is in the karting. T so he is in the team. He is karting. He's 13. He's from America. And I'm really not sure how to pronounce his name. I think it was Hugo... Ugo Chukwa. Now, I've probably said that so bad. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, they have kind of revived this driver academy. So it's quite difficult to rank them. But I guess we could go from previous who, who they've had in before. Um, and obviously, they're trying to revamp this and they're going to karting. So they're thinking long term. They're thinking of this guy when he's like 20. Maybe he could be in the team. So what do you think about that, you know, approach? Uh, Lewis Hamilton. End of. Without McLaren's right. backing on Lewis Hamilton, would Lewis have been able to make it to Formula 1? I think a lot of us would probably say no because of his background, despite the amount of talent he had. They support their drivers from day one, from the karting, and they're there pretty much all the way through. And yeah, I just think it's absolutely fantastic. They are clearly putting their money into the people that they really believe and they're believing in them from a young age and saying we will support you all the way through so I think it's quality and look they've got a world champion out of it so that's all I'm saying. I know they dropped Nick De Vries, but also look at how well <laughs> that Lando's doing because he is now like integral in their team. Like yeah. last year, you could see how much he was getting involved with the team and how much this year, like he will be a major part of that team. And he could go on and on. And I do think Lando will be at McLaren for a very long time mm. developing because I think they're all about development and especially going into karting. Like, like you said, Kira, they're thinking about this long term. And just yeah. the fact that they had Lewis, I don't see how we can even put it anywhere near oh. Mer because they had Lewis and they've had Lando. And I know they dropped Nick and it's really sad. But and they had a bit of a stinker with stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. but I think they're, they're like now focusing on the future and I think that's really important for the team to get back up after the sort of Stoffel, Alonso sort of days. Yeah. Obviously so I think regardless, they got Stoffel to Formula 1 and yeah. not being funny, they, I think they maybe, I don't know whether, I don't think they thought Nick was going to do as well as he did in the 2019 F2 season. They've had, hey, wait, they've, the three of the four have been the champions, have they not? Oh, in in Formula Two, yeah, and Lewis, she, yeah. Nick, and then obviously Stoff, Stoff and Lando was runner up. Very oh, yeah. good point, Donna. So actually, I they've think. done quite well. I think yeah. we could probably. I don't think they. I know Lewis got the championship, but you've got to look at everybody, and I don't yeah. know if it would quite be that top. But I definitely think they could go in. We'll defo get them to F one because they have. Apart from Nick, we'll, oh, we'll see what happens in seven years' time. Should we put yeah. in that then? Yeah, pop them up there. 
Brilliant. Okay, who have we got next? We have got Mercedes. Now we don't really hear about the Mercedes ones too much. Oh, I've just completely lost my We've my notes. Frederick, our bestie. We Frederick bestie. <laughs> we so Frederick obsessed. <laughs> we are. So with the Mercedes, who would have Frederick guessedy? <laughs> well, I'll wait for her to finish. <laughs> Okay, so with the Mercedes Juniors, they have revamped their team again. They're before they just had Ocon and George and, you know, we not really doing much. But now they have a lovely long team. They have got Frederick Vesti, who is Danish. He is in FIA F3 and he's 19. We've got George Russell, who's 23. He's British and he's in Formula 1. We have got Andrea Kimi Antoleni, who is karting and he is 14. We have got Paul Aaron, who is in Freca. He is Estonian and he is 17. And we have got Alex Powell, who is Jamaican. He is karting and he is 13. So what do we think about that? I think I love that personally. I, think that's I like feel a... like we've not got enough evidence because... I think they're just... looking long term. And I think before when I used to look at this team, I used to think, right, so they kind of had Paul Aaron left, right and centre. Um, but they had George Russell in there and they knew that they were doing with George. But they went for the Carters as well. But actually, I think they've realised there was a gap in the middle and that's why they signed Frederick. So they were like, oh, we can't really wait for the Carters for this long. So they've signed Frederick. So I think they're really thinking strategically. And if you look at the history of Mercedes getting juniors in, I know there's not much history, but solid job, do you not think? Yeah, but I think they really left Ocon in the mud as well. Remember, Ocon was a Mercedes Junior. Yeah, and but no, they didn't. They actually did Ocon really well because yeah. they knew he wasn't mm. ready to be up in the top team and they did not re-sign Valtteri Bottas until that Renault deal was done for Ocon. So I actually have a lot yeah. of respect for how they kind of handled that. And unfortunately, Ocon probably has not been performing well enough to get into the top seat. But they have looked after him, you know, while he was in Formula but. One. They managed to get him up to Formula One. Like, I think they've done a decent job with him, but they've, he's just not talented enough. Oh, that sounds so bad. Oh. He's just not he's reached the full team. potential needed to be in a Mercedes seat. Yeah. They didn't quite, I mean, they got Pascal Verlein to Formula One, which was very good because I'm pretty sure he was in DTM mm. before he came up. But again, they didn't really secure him like they should have done within Formula One. So that is one letdown for me, but maybe it's because I am biased towards Pascal Verlein. <laughs> I think it's just like, if you think now, they probably are thinking about their future because they know that Lewis will be gone soon. Yeah. So they yeah. do need to sort of like think of who will come in and replace him and then who will come in and like be like the George Russell. Like someone needs to be the George Russell to be ready to replace any driver in the top team when they need to leave. So I like you say, I think they are proper focusing on the future. But I would I also would say they get out as well that Mercedes does have a Formula E team. So expanding their yeah. driver academy as well, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're all going to make it to Formula One, but then Mercedes will have options when it comes to Formula E as well in the future once Stoff and Nick move on. Yeah. But if you look at it on the surface, they are getting people to Formula One. And the fact that Toto has got so much cash money, he will keep you in your Formula One seat, like Ocon. Think how much they paid Cyril. To That's keep Ocon there. Mm. He will keep mm. you, you know, apart from Pascal. So I would think it will definitely get them to F1 because I can't think of something where they haven't got someone to F1. And I know they haven't been around for ages, as I've said, but they will get you to Formula 1. And I think they'll get best Fre Frederick Bestie or Vesti there, you know? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, am I, am I, I wrong? I agree. I agree as well, actually, yeah. Yeah? I mean, all of them are going to get you to Formula 1. I know. Well, 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 unless you're not LP. Well, moving on to the next one. <sighs> Don't know how to go about this one. We've got Red Bull, okay? Ugh. Prepare for the SA. We have got Liam Lawson. He is 19 from New Zealand and he is doing F2 and DTM. We have got Yuri Vips, who is Estonian. He is in F2 and he's 20. We have got Jehan Duravala, who is Indian. He is 22 and he is in F2. We have got Jack Crawford, who is in FIA F3. He's American. He is 15, but when this comes out, he will be 16. Happy birthday, Jack. We have got Johnny Edgar in FIA F3, who is British, and he's 17. We have got Ayumu Uwasa, who is in FIA F3, and he's Japanese. 19. I thought he was younger. He's not. We have got Dennis Hauger, who is in FIA F3, Norwegian, 18. 13 year old, we have got Ariv Lindbald, who is in Carton and is British. And we've got Jack Dewan, who is FIA F3, Australian 18. So a lot of them people are in FIA F3 and FIA F2. Loads of them. Jesus, Nine of them, people, that's basically a small classroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got a lot God. of them. 
I think they're very much Red Bull, very much they're like Christian Horner famously said in Drive to Survive. They will either sink or they'll swim. Yes. And I think that's sort of the way they're going with this. Is let's just put them all in a pool and see who drowns and see yes. who survives. That's <laughs> genuinely what they're doing. But think how many have drowned previously. Like the picture to this tier list is actually all of like the juniors from like 2014. And I look and I'm like, you're gone, you're gone, you're gone, you're gone. It's awful. Yeah, but, yeah, but equally, if, you it, if you look at it, oh, go on, Dawny. I was going like to say equally, say that yeah, say. Red Bull are arguably the most successful junior driver team. <gasps> yeah. Think about how they, many at people... At least all of their people come up at for some yeah. point. Like, Jeff, he wasn't here for very long, but he was still in Formula but 1. But they are also one of the most unsuccessful junior teams because of how they treat them, you know? But that's not what Top we're asking top. here. We're oh. talking about can they get them to Formula 1. Uh, and I think the answer is, yeah. yeah. Look, yeah. look how quickly they got Seb up into Formula 1 and yeah, their world true. champion material. So when, so we, but we'll get, definitely get them to Formula 1, but, you know, they will also very quickly get them we to... We can't uh, put them all in. I actually... And we'll uh, definitely get you to Formula how? 1. I mean, yeah. they're all just doing better than we thought, I think. <laughs> Okay, next one is the Salbert Junior team, and this is going to be a little difficult for us to judge, but we will try our best. We have got Teo Pocher, who is French, he is in F2 and he is 17. We've got Christian Ho, who's in Carton, he is Singapore slash Korean and he is 14. Now, a lot of these other people I do not have ages for. We've got Miguel Costa, who's Brazilian, in Carton. We've got Emerson Fittipaldi Jr., who is Brazilian and he is in Danish F4. We have then got loads more Carters. We have got Tizanio, who, Tizanio Monza, who's from Singapore, in Carting. Gustav Wiz, oh my gosh, Wizinski, who is in karting, he's Polish. We've got Mache Glads, who is in karting, he's also Polish. And we've got Sunny Smith, British in karting. So I didn't actually realize they had so many juniors. I thought they Maybe just had terrible I. chair. Like, I I also thought also thought why this. do they have juniors? I they don't, don't even, even have a Formula One team. Well, Salba is they alpha. Had, uh, academies because I thought the alpha drivers would just come from. The Ferrari, well, no, they actually they had Charus were actually powered by the Salba Junior mm. team 2019 F2, but that quickly kind of went, so I don't know what happened there. But they they were like the Salba Junior team. So I mean, the only person oh, you can really look at representative is yeah. Table Chair and obviously Emerson Fittipaldi Junior coming up. So it's difficult, isn't it? Well, this sorry, be this is just gonna have to go right at the bottom because we just do not have any evidence yeah. to have mm. this actually being successful and actually. But maybe working. if we come back in a couple of years and see whether Teopold Chair came up, then we would. Yeah. yeah. But I, I just say can't right. see a pathway. I think them. the fact that none of us even knew that there was really a Salva Academy yeah. just goes to show that how bad they are at trying to promote that. Yes. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't not, say... I think part of the issue as well is that you've always got that one Ferrari Driver Academy seat in in yeah. Alfa Romeo so you uh, you only have one seat to basically promote your junior talent if you if you want to and let's be honest Kimi Raikkonen is going to be keeping that seat cushy for the next 20 years <laughs> <laughs> he is um I wouldn't say they're actually so bad I'd probably say worthless and useless which probably sounds a little bit yeah. worse mm. but I mean they've got table chair so and they've got a Fittipaldi so I think we'll put them there so yeah. sorry Salba but we'll come back to you in like 10 years time when they've all grown sort up. yourselves out and we'll we'll get back to you <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I just need to stop and start my recording. Okay, so we are on to our final team and we have got Williams. Now we have got 26 year old Roy Nassani who is Israeli and he is from in Formula 2. We've got Dan Tictum who's 21, he is British and he is also in F2. We have got 25 year old Jack Aitken who is in GT World Cup and he is Scottish slash Korean. And we have got Jamie Chadwick who is 22, he is, she is British and she does W Series and Extreme E. So just the four of them there, what do we think? Top tier because they got Roy. I'm Absolutely don't see, apart from Dan, I just mm. don't see any of them going into Formula One. But like, I really want Jamie there, but I just don't see how she's going to get there. I mean, I don't think they're supporting Jamie's development as much as they possibly could. Uh, she's obviously won W Series. Yeah. I would have liked to see her go move over to Formula 3. I thought that would be a really, really good step for her. Yeah. But again, as well, they're all much older drivers. We've not got a single driver under 20 years old there. Mm, yeah. You know how I look at this? Okay, so Jamie obviously isn't quite ready. Jack has moved to GT and he's quite a bit older. Roy obviously has the money, but he's 26. But he could come up, possibility. But Dan, this is Dan's final year in F2 if they don't promote him to F1 and support him. So this is when, this will be telling whether Williams actually support Dan or not. So... Yeah, but who else is Williams going to have? Because in reality... I think they'll sign Roy. All are assuming that, that 
uh, George is not going to be in that seat. So you've got mm. Latifi next to you. Are you going to have? I think like, it's going to be Roy. honestly going to put Roy there. Are Roy's not. I Roy's think... not got points, has he? Regardless. I don't know. I don't know. Cheers, about Max. Know. For sorting that out, so but, we never get Roy. But yeah, when you when you genuinely think about it, like who. Like, Williams with this new owner that they've got, I don't think they're looking for the cash as much as they were in the past. Mm. So, if they are actually serious about getting back to the front of the grid, you can't sign Roy Nassani because he just no. isn't bringing that level of driving that you need to have in Formula yeah. 1. And that's no disrespect to him, or maybe it is, I don't know. He's a good driver, <laughs> he's just not F1 material. So, yeah. your only chance, really, is to sign Bottas when he probably will get dropped <laughs> from Mercedes, or sign one of your juniors. And I think Dan is, you know, he has the talent to back it up even mm. though he runs his mouth a little bit <laughs> yeah I mean what do you all think I don't know I mean Dan's got the talent and I definitely think he could step up but again I mean as much as Formula 1 teams say they don't want the money they always want a driver that's got some good backing regardless of whether you are Toto yeah. Wolf or you are Gunther Steiner you know mm. I would honestly put it in meh because surely yeah. there's a reason why Jack moved from Alpine Pink. to Williams they're obviously yes. giving him something that Alpine did not do and I think he very much knows that he, although he got that run in Sakia, I think he knows that he was never going to be their sort of first choice when it comes to a Formula 1 seat. Mm. Mm. But there's definitely something that drew Jack away from Alpine to Williams, which is why I'm like, I'd give them a meh. Yeah, yeah I would say a meh as well. I yeah? Think, okay, yeah, let's put them in. way too kind mm. to I think if, if, I I know. if I was to change one on this list, I would probably put McLaren into F1 yeah, I WDC would. because I just think of Lewis and also how Lando's going, but... I think this is, I think like all them drivers, all them teams in will definitely get to F1, will definitely get you to F1. So it's not yeah. like if we're like not yeah. doing it fairly. I think if you look at it in comparison, like McLaren is, McLaren's driver academy, I don't think is on the same level of like the Ferrari driver academy. Like, no. like what Ferrari driver who's won a championship can you name in the last 15 years? Ah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> At least McLaren have Lewis and probably a soon to be Formula E champion. Who knows? Oh. So I would bump McLaren up because I don't think they're on Ferrari. Should we level. just do it then for the band? Yeah. 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 Hey, go McLaren. <laughs> Dorney, you are welcome. You can take that into work and you can say thank Look what you. I done over the approval. over the Wednesday night. <laughs> So there we have it. That is our final tier list. Honestly, that went better than I expected. I thought we were going to say they were all rubbish. But actually, when you sit down and think about it, we do have some amazing talents in the teams and they do bring a lot of people into Formula 1 that we probably wouldn't have if they were not signed. If you did enjoy this tier list, please let us know down below and do not forget to like and subscribe to our channel. But I think that's it for us today. We will see you again soon. Bye.